Wow, pretty compelling stuff there from Michael Irvin as we welcome you back inside Chronicle Live. Brody Brazil, along with Fon Yacker, who is the director of The Last Closet. Also, Jennifer Kelly, co-director of The Last Closet. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Fon, I want to begin with you. What is The Last Closet all about there? We certainly saw the clip of, mm -hmm. uh, of an NFL football player talking about his relationship with his gay brother. Mm -hmm. uh, but what does your foundation set out to do? The Last Closet is a web campaign and video project to end homophobia in men's pro sports. It's a lofty tagline, but that's what we're out to do. And it's not going to be an easy task, is it? Because for so many years, this is, uh, go for good or bad, the nature of sports that professional athletes simply don't come out of the closet while they're still competing professionally. Yeah, in all of U.S. history, no athlete has come out publicly while actively playing. Uh, Jennifer, this is not going to be easy. How will you guys approach and attack this? You're actually trying to work with the commissioners of all the major sports, the NFL, Major League Baseball, the National Hockey League, the NBA. So how do you feel like this approach will best work for you guys? Well, we're, we're running a campaign, a series of campaigns that really is trying to reach the entire sports hierarchy. We want to he, you know, initiate and promote dialogue about the issue of homophobia in sports. So our initial campaign does target the commissioners of the five major sports, and we're hoping to secure an interview with them on camera, because for them to speak out on camera versus in, in print um, would, would make so much more of an impact, just the personal aspect of it. Fawn mentions the excellent point that no player has come out while they're still a current professional athlete. Are you guys under the impression that once somebody does that, that the domino effect will take place and it will be much easier for everybody else to follow suit, anybody that wants to do what the first person did? I think that can happen and we certainly hope that happens. What needs to also happen concurrently is that the commissioners of the leagues and the owners and, and every level of the, of the professional sports world needs to set up some safety nets, some, some um, guidance for that gay athlete, because just to have one come out may not be enough. We'd like to have multiple athletes come out. Fawn, let me uh, play devil's advocate here. Not my <laughs> belief, but something that somebody might say. Uh, there's not even that many gay athletes out there in the professional world. So how many people do you really want to come out? What well, would your answer be to that? We're hoping for one in each league, at least, mm -hmm. to start. And then um, maybe the domino theory will take place, maybe not. But it, coming out is a very individual choice. And a lot of people sort of project that it's going to happen in a few years, that it could happen tomorrow. It really depends on, on the athlete and what when they're ready. And um, there probably are less gay athletes in the pros because young kids, when they're going into team sports, realize that they're going to be harassed and bullied. Sure. So they back out. But but we think that there's a percentage in every league. There, there, there's got to be. There's over 50,000 people, who athletes who have participated in the sports there's got to be some game. The numbers would certainly yeah. <laughs> suggest it. Uh, the difficulty of all this happening seemed to be twofold. First, there's the individual matter of a person maybe willing to let out their secret, if you will, mm -hmm. or, or change the way that they're perceived. And then the second part of it is exactly that. How will that person deal with teammates, opponents, fans, hecklers? Mm -hmm. Am I missing anything there? Are those the two major hurdles that that, that one person needs to get over? That and um, I think at this point, I think an athlete realizes that they won't lose endorsements if they right. have them already because there would be too much backlash. Um, and I think that, you know, players, pro players have played with gay players. They just haven't known it. So I don't think anything would really change and the, and the culture is changing within pro sports. There's much more acceptance than there was even like a year or two ago. If you, if, if when the polls keep coming in, they keep changing and shifting where people are saying, sure. I don't really care. You know, Jennifer, athletes have come out, but only after they've retired from mm -hmm. professional sports. Are some of them going back now and saying, hey, you know, I regret not doing this sooner? Have you found any, anybody in that situation? I don't know if they say, I regret not doing that sooner. I think they wish that they had found support and had been able to come out sooner. You know, it's sad to hear stories like Billy Bean and Dave Copay and Sarah sure. Tuolo who uh, were really felt trapped in a prison of, of lies and having to live a, live a double life. Um, and they certainly didn't want to have that existence. They felt like it was necessary, though. And we feel like the culture has changed enough now where that you don't have to live those double lives. They can come out and fully realize their potential as human beings and as professional players. Fawn and Jennifer, we thank you both. And once again, the website is? The Last Closet. It's www.thelastcloset.org. .org. Very important to remember <laughs> that part. All right, thank you so much for your time and uh, you. to thank tell you. us about your cause. We really appreciate it.